Hey guys, today we're taking a deep dive into the browser in Final Cut Pro. I know a lot of people are not using the browser to its full capability. So today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know about it and why you should be spending a lot of time working in your browser when you're editing. If you're still editing like this, where you're dropping full clips onto the timeline, combing through them, cutting out sections. By the end of this video, I'm gonna have you convinced that the browser is where it's at. All right, guys, let's just dive right into it. All right, here we are in Final Cut. Let's just start with the basics, shall we? So as you know, here is your browser. Now we have a couple different options for viewing our browser. Right now we're on the thumbnail view, but if I click this button here, I can switch to a list view. This gives me a preview at the very top of each clip as I select it. And then it also gives me all of these columns with a lot of data. I can actually reorder these columns by just grabbing them and pushing them around. I can reduce the width of these columns so I can get more data here. And then I can scrub over and see even more. So for me, the list view is most helpful if I'm listening to interviews because I don't need to know what each shot looks like. They all kind of look the same if it's the same interview, right? But what I do want is that metadata like time codes here so I can cross reference with any notes I may have taken on set. So for me, that's when I would reach for the list view. Otherwise, I'm working in the thumbnail view to toggle back to that. We just hit this button here and I love the thumbnail view because it gives me a very quick preview of every single shot. Plus it tells me what the aspect ratios of these shots are. You can see some of these are 16 by nine and some of these are vertical videos. So I do love that thumbnail view. Let's customize the clip appearance in our thumbnail view by heading over to this button here. Looks like a little film strip with a point at the end of it. And we can use this slider to scale up our view and scale it down if we so choose. If we want to get a better understanding of the length of each of these clips, you can dial up this slider here and you can see that the longer the clip is and more elongated the thumbnail is in our browser. And if I wanna go back and make them all the same size again, I just hit the shortcut shift Z and you can see they snap back to fit in my browser. I can group these browser clips by hitting these drop down menus here and I can turn on the waveforms by checking this box here. I'm gonna close up my waveforms and you do see that I have continuous playback enabled. What continuous playback means is if I queue up my playhead inside one of these clips and hit the space bar to play it back, it'll continue to the next clip. Continuous playback is great if you're just trying to get a sense of the contents of the clip and you just wanna sit back and sort of passively watch without having to touch your mouse or the keyboard every time. Speaking of playback, as you saw me do, you can play back a clip by hitting the space bar or if you wanna play it back in high speed, just hit the L key twice and you can play the clips back in double speed. Love this feature, use this one all the time. And then one other thing to know about navigating around your browser, if you don't wanna to touch your mouse, and you just wanna move clip to clip, use the up and down arrow keys. All right, when you're ready to mark your ranges, you can just use your mouse to click and drag a range of a clip. Or if you just wanna use keyboard shortcuts, you can hit that double L to play in high speed and then hit the I key to mark an in and the O key to mark an out. All right, at this point, you probably are thinking, yeah, and now I'm gonna drop that range into my timeline, right? But stop there. There's a lot more you can do once you've marked your ranges. This is what this video is about. Now we're getting into the meat of it. If I were just going through all of these clips and I wanted to comb through them all before I started building my timeline, I could do a lot of organization here in the browser. For instance, you can see I've selected just this range of this clip. Watch this. I'm going to hit the F key and now I've marked that range green. What that means is I've marked this particular part of this particular clip as a favorite. Let's do a few more. I could even select more than one range in a single clip and you see all of these green highlights. But what good do these green highlights do? Watch this. If we head up to the top of the browser menu, I'm by default on all clips. What if I just selected favorites and now I can sort my clips by just parts of the clips that I knew were good takes. Think about how much faster that would be when you're editing, if you just knew what the best clips were because you did this work ahead of time. And you can see that even though two of these clips have the same name, which means they're actually part of the same clip, they've been isolated 
as their own individual clips here in the favorites menu. Let's go back to the all clips option. And what if we found parts of the clips that we didn't like? I'm gonna select this range here and I'm going to hit the delete key. Now it's turned red. Let's do a few more. Now, if I head up to all clips, we can see which clips we've rejected or I can just hide the rejected clips. So I don't even have to look at those clips because they're rejected. Let's go back to all. And by the way, if you wanted to undo this, the shortcut is just you. And that goes for favorites as well. All right, let's look at some other options we have. If we go up to the view tab and mouse down to browser, you can see that I have all of these options here for the browser. I can, for instance, hide the names of my clips. Why would I wanna do this? Well, in this particular situation, all of these clips were shot with the same camera, so I don't really need to know the clip names, and now I can declutter my browser window. Let's go back to the View tab and look at some other options. I could enable waveforms if I wanted to. I'm gonna disable those. I've got marked ranges enabled. Watch what happens if I disable that. My favorites and rejected ranges go away. I don't know why you would wanna turn that off, so I'm gonna turn that back on. And the next one here is used media ranges. In my opinion, this one should always be on. I'm going to enable it. Let me show you what it does. If I start dropping clips here in my timeline, you can see I now get this orange indicator at the bottom of each clip. That shows me what part of each clip is actually being actively used in the timeline I have pulled up front. Super helpful information. Let's look at a couple of other things up in that view tab. If I turn on the skimmer info, now when I click on each clip, I'm getting some detailed information here. I'm getting the name of the clip and I'm getting the time code of that clip as well. This time code information can be really helpful if you took like detailed notes on the shoot. Now let's go to what I think is the best function of the browser. This actually kind of works in your sidebar as well. And that is creating keyword collections to help sort your clip. So if you don't know what a keyword collection is, it's basically that you can bulk assign keywords to specific clips and so then in your sidebar and browser, you can just view those specific clips. Let me show you how it works. You can grab the keyword collection button here and you get this little pop-up menu or the shortcut to reveal this menu is Command K. So I'm going to start by making some keywords here. So I've created all of these keyword shortcuts. So now if I select a horizontal clip here and hit the shortcut control one, I get a blue line at the top of the clip, which indicates that it has now been keyworded. And if I expand my event here, you can see I have a new keyword collection that says horizontal. Now I could go through one by one each of these horizontal clips and hit control one to drop them into my keyword collection, but that would kind of take a long time, right? Here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to select these clips in the browser in big chunks. So I'm gonna select the first one, hold down my shift key and select the last one I wanna grab. And now I can drag it into the horizontal keyword collection. I'm gonna do this for all of my horizontal clips. And now they're all in there nice and sorted. Let's go back to my main event here and let's mark some of these vertical clips as vertical clips. So I'm going to select multiple clips here and then I'm going to hit the shortcut that I've assigned for vertical clips, which is control two. And now you can see under my main event here, I have a new keyword collection, vertical, and I'm just gonna grab all these vertical clips and drop them in there. And another thing you can do is assign multiple keywords to the same clip, which is super handy when you're trying to stay organized. So I've got these other keywords here that represent the names of our on-camera talent. So I'm going to grab these clips of Sherry and I'm going to hit control four. And now you can see that Sherry has her own keyword collection, but these same clips also appear in my vertical keyword collection and all of my clips appear in my event. So imagine if you were going to edit a big project and you just took a few minutes at the very beginning of your edit session to sort your clips with keyword collections. If you took a little more time to just section out your favorite parts of the clips and a few extra minutes to just customize your clip appearance, 
depending on the needs of the project that you're working on, it will make your edits so much faster as opposed to dropping the whole clip down in the timeline and then cutting out the parts that you want. That is the most inefficient way to edit. And this organizational system in the browser is really what makes Final Cut stand out for a lot of editors. If I have convinced you that you need to be spending more time working in your browser, let me know in the comments, you guys. I love hanging out with you. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.